Does that? Yeah. I know, right? It's electrical. It's electric. It's easy. Why are you doing? I was like, there's a good stuff in your throat. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no, I just take bites out of like that. And I said, his stomach hurts. Depends on each. I'm sure they eat six of them. Yeah, don't eat six of them. You want some in the kitchen? Um, I had two peach trees. I mean, I'm like, yeah, oh, I peached out. Let me tell you. Yeah. I mean, I, it's like you can have too much peach. You actually can have peach. Well, and I froze them. Uh, that's very. Like, well, they yeah, all yeah, just, just came right from the side. It's literally just like that. But it's just that heat, and so they got they got. What do you do? Which is really like when it's like 20 degrees. You make my friends get lost. Yeah, that's the jam. So you need to eat ice cream for the past course of three days. So it's right. Oh, you're going to eat it once. Yeah, we gave away the day. Oh, the sandal was a plus. Sure, plus or yeah. Like you just like a bunch of plants, look up the tree. Yeah. I mean, like, it doesn't look like a thing. Uh, yeah. like, so I it's like, you know, that's good. Really really nice. nice. I told my neighbors yeah. that they're going to Oh, I took that. It's flower, oats. Oh, for a couple. Yeah, I'm sure I don't know. Uh, I think it was some nuts, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You found the, uh, I don't know, the, yeah, the tree in yeah. the open space. And then it was kind of broken. It was just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I, I like the farming okay. part. Oh, what are you doing? No, absolutely. I mean, I want to put it on. I mean, I'll put it on. I mean, it's still not bad. Yeah, but I did it. So we went out there and sure enough, we had a bunch of people. You have a shop. I love you. So they're green. I think on the outside and they're both on the inside. I think that's a. They're really good. Oh, no. So, yeah, is that a mission pick? The green one with the. I think it is. It's, so it's green on the outside and like just really, really purple on the outside. Like really interesting. Javier found those dope space. Which one? The the one? The 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 so, so they're green on the no, outside? No, no, which. Uh, oh, the portable okay. green. Oh. We're in, not in, in, <laughs> port, in port, let's get lower or the <laughs> In Porterfield, not so spring. Was that Porterfield? Yeah, yeah, near the green. So Javier comes back with a handful and I'm like, that's the yellow legged frog hat cake. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the yellow frog's pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a GIS location. There is a lot of Yeah, we're ready. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Are you, here talking about Are you waiting on me? I don't, I'm not sharing anything anymore. Okay. Now we're good to go. I know. Sure. Yep. Sure, Mike. We've been getting good. I've been just watching you guys. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Chip. Yeah, I, I'm having trouble with my legislative home. Sorry. Yeah, it's my fault. Planning and sustainability. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. And uh, we have a roll call. Anybody? Chair Ben. Yeah. All members are present. All members are present. present. All righty. Moving on to uh, public comment item B. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on my matter not on today's agenda? agenda? I just got a couple of comments. And, uh, yeah. So, first of all, uh, could you state your name for the record? Please? Certainly, yes. Yeah. Robert Kozlowski, a Cloverdale resident. And uh, one comment, as you've probably heard a lot, taxes are too high is uh, an assertion that a lot of people say. And, I think the city's done a good job, but I think we need to continue to focus on spending, not as much on revenue. And with that in mind, I was glad to hear that the city abandoned the um, local Cloverdale property tax proposal, which would have raised, and David and I went back and forth on home values and stuff, would have raised the property tax increases by three to six hundred dollars annually, depending on the value of the property. I was also um, pleased to hear that the unelected and non local BAFA, Bay Area Housing, Finance Authority withdrew its regional property tax proposal, which would have raised again our property tax and our property taxes here from anywhere from 120 to 240 dollars. So that was great. Unfortunately, there's still a state climbing bond, bond property tax proposal that's on the ballot. And uh, my observation is that this is a duplicate request for things that we're already funding, whether it's vegetation management through things like PGE or uh, the, the wildfire settlement fund among other things, and that'll add about, if it passes, 93 to about 
almost $200 annually to our property taxes. So the good news is two of the three of them have disappeared and people that own property won't be hit with uh, anywhere from $500 to $1,000 annually in the property taxes. A lot of people are hurting these days. Um, the only other thing that's a concern as a resident is uh, the attempt by a lot of politicians to lower the voting threshold from two thirds to 55% plus one. And uh, I would advocate that uh, we say no to these constitutional amendments, AC, ACA 1 and ACA 13. They've since been um, assigned uh, prop, proposition numbers. And I would argue that we could say yes to the Taxpayer Protection Act, but unfortunately, <laughs> We can't because Governor Newsom has squashed this protection of taxpayers using the courts. So taxpayer protections will not be on the ballot. So I would encourage the city to look at those things and don't send notes out to folks like, say, Mr. McGuire and others about, yes, we support uh, lowering the voting threshold because that does not protect taxpayers. That allows the, the government, state, and local to uh, raise taxes easily. Anyways, that's my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to communications. I'm not, and I don't see any new communications. Mike, is that no, the, only, the only one that got added recently is um, from Mr. Kraslowski for item F6, but I added it under item okay. F6. Great. As a public correspondent, but no other communication. All right. And then we'll, so with that, we'll move on to item D, approval of minutes. Has everyone had a chance to uh, review the minutes? Is there any motion to approve? Motion to approve. All right, second. second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, the motion carries. We'll move on to new business and item one, uh, discussion of micro enterprise home kitchen operations. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm gonna take this item and uh, encourage input from our assistant city manager, community development director of planning regarding general plan policy. But uh, just to introduce this item, uh, including the packet is a, is a memo uh, from the Sonoma County Health Director, Tina Rivera, uh, addressed to city managers. I was fortunate to have a, at least a presentation uh, by health department staff uh, on what's referred to as micro enterprise home kitchen operations, or MECO. Uh, Part of their outreach from the county to city managers was uh, in regards to the direction that county staff have received by the board of supervisors uh, to bring forward a, uh, an, an, an ordinance uh, establishing uh, MECOs. MECOs were uh, what, what really what they are is uh, you know, small scale food facilities within uh, allowed within private private residences or private homes uh this was uh legislation that was uh, brought forward by the assembly uh ultimately approved and it, it basically uh enabled uh the county to implement uh county-wide uh procedures uh, or ordinance for for uh micro micro enterprise home kitchens um, so basically, when it, if the, if the board decides either by ordinance uh, or it can also by resolution to opt in, it would uh, permit Nico's with with in the entirety. It's kind of an unusual one because it <laughs> typically uh, when the county opts in to something, it it, it only covers the incorporated area. But I think because this falls within the Department of Health purview. Uh, Department of Health oversees both uh, the county as well as incorporated cities from a from a health permitting perspective. Uh, so the you know kind of the premise uh, of Mico's in part is to um, support you know home based businesses. We we have uh, examples here in Cloverdale of uh, what we we'll call uh, the tamale lady who. Uh, you know, everybody says makes the most delicious tamales. And uh, taquitos. Yes, this is a, a, a an instance where the legislature has found that there's a number of these small scale business enterprises that that exist, but they kind of uh, fall under the radar of the health department, and and the intent in part is to 
uh, I guess for lack of a better word, uh, legalize those operations, but also with that comes, uh, you know, some uh, some requirements to meet health department requirements. So there's a kind of a public health aspect to it. Um, in terms of the requirements, kind of the basic requirements provided for in state law, it must be, you know, a primary uh, residence. It, it can't be a second home or a motor home or a vacation home. Uh, the the uh, it can can be a, a, a renter so the property owner has to approve of the use um, and you know no more than one employee may work in the facility uh, in addition to family and household members among others um, any food that's sold must be prepared cooked and served the same day uh, there there are some limitations in terms of the uh, number of meals per day or meals per week and in gross sales. Uh, the, with the, currently it's 30 meals per day or 90 meals per week uh, with you know gross annual sales limited to $100,000 annually. And that would be something that would be addressed as part of the health department's permit process. Uh, I will say that uh, many city managers kind of said, well, that's a pretty tough one to try to monitor is how you, how you, how you you know, and what constitutes a meal is that, you know, one tamale. is that one tamale? Is that two tamales? And and it does provide that they can be uh, actually uh, eaten on site, picked up or delivered uh, as long as as long as they're, they're registered and uh, there's no third party. So it's not, you know, like Uber Eats and those kinds of food delivery services are, are not allowed. Uh, from a, from the health perspective, uh, the environmental health would conduct uh, you know an, an inspection a year. I know they're they're kind of they're trying to address the the cost of that service to determine you know what's the fee that these businesses would pay on um, uh, to to have that you know to get are the fees paid. to Cloverdale or the fees to the county? The fees to the county. This would be the health department. And it's kind of a, the county operates on kind of a fee recovery basis. So it's, you know, how do they how do they charge to drive up, do all that stuff? Uh, there's a lot of exclusions. I won't go into all the details. Uh, one of so the 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 the, the, um, the board has directed staff county to bring this back in September. And they, they asked that we uh, share this with uh, you know our our electeds, uh, so we wanted to start here. Um, basically, it, it, by opting in, assuming the board moves forward with that, uh, it you know it would be a what's considered a by right use in residential zones, unless there is language in the in a respective general plan that says, you know, that the explicitly prohibits these types of operations. Um, you know, there's there's kind of a, just to say there's, there's kind of this uh, equity perspective with this. And, you know, and that often the, the folks that have these types of businesses tend to be maybe, uh, you know, a lower income demographic. And so it's an opportunity to, you know, provide for the, the uh, economic support for those individuals uh, and other counties have have already opted in. There's there's 14 counties that have opted in, and then there's there's 17 that are remaining. And, and it looks like uh, that uh, there, there's an intent to for for Sonoma County to opt in. Um, and in general, I think many of the cities said they're supportive, but there are, there are concerns. I think the concerns are. Kind of uh, in in the potential in in the bucket of potential conflicts around having a, a commercial use in a residential district, if it was to uh, you know become an issue, become a problem. Um, and 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 I think that's where the state attempted to uh, address that with you know either limitations on dollar sales or the number of meals per week. So if it became Wildly successful, uh, you know, might be beyond those permit requirements. Uh, but that that's that's kind of it in a nutshell in terms of the program. Uh, really, it, it it would be uh, our role would be to provide feedback whether we we support or oppose, uh, and if we oppose, you know, providing uh, it, it you know it's, it, the legislation doesn't just provide for 
you know, uh, a jurisdiction say, well, I don't like it. It's, it has to be some based on some kind of uh, policy provision in your general plan. That's the way the language was written in the, in the state uh, in, in England legislation. So um, that's that's an overview of, of Mikos. Uh, they've been around actually. I mean, this this topic is. Has uh, been, been around forever. It's been a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been around since people had caves and good arcades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's there there is uh, kind of somewhat corresponding, but it's it's a little bit different. And I know Kevin's familiar with the uh, uh, cottage industry, uh, which allows for uh, making other types of products. So oh, yeah. uh, this is really kind of focused on home kitchens. So. Right. Uh, you know meals, and, and and we we see it. You know, Sonoma County is kind of known for, uh, you know, the small chocolate purveyors, the small, uh, you know, Jeez. nut products uh, <laughs> and other things. So that's kind of that cottage industry, which has been part of our you know uh, economic development strategy in in Sonoma County. Um, and you know, I don't think there's been a you know, any significant impacts that we've we've seen from that. Um, in fact, sometimes these those cottage industries are what become uh, large enough to open their own commercial stores, and we start to see their products at in our local grocery store. And uh, you know, there's there's a lot of success stories around that. But uh, whether Miko will happen too, I don't know. But that's uh, that that's um, I I think based on the 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 what we've heard is the board's direction to staff. This will be coming forward, and it would be important to articulate if there are some, you know, some serious concerns relative to general plan policy about about these. Well, the only thing is like the health and safety code limitations on this right here is like animals are not excluded from cooking areas. I mean, where? How about our our restaurants? You know, not just Cloverdale, but Sonoma County wide. They're following all of that, and these Mikos. I'm all for them. I think they're great because I eat a lot of their food, but. If they don't have to follow it, and then these things take off, and now most people are going to buy it from here, taking business from restaurants that do have to follow this, where's the blow that's going to be right there? Right. You know what I mean? They're going to say, hey, we have to follow it. On the other hand, I think a lot of restaurants would say that's how it started. Exactly. You know, you know it's. Yeah. And that is the limitation. I think that's the, the what they're trying to limit the number of meals and also the gross um, right. and income is that when you get to be a certain size, then you need to go and open up a. I should decide. Right. So they still must have a, a business owner of business license. Yeah, and that's actually oh, my yeah. 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 correct business, business license. Yeah, yeah. 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 food handler card and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's still a cottage. You you can make this, you can make food at your house legally, package it up and sell it commercially with the health inspection. The big I think one of the bigger changes here is you can have people come to your house. Right. Yeah. And and David's right, the cottage is like jams and things yeah. like that, typically, but and then David mentioned the general plan. I mean, I went through the general plan, and I there's really, I mean, the, our general plan is a little older, so there's I don't think they yeah. into things like this, but there's I can't find anything that explicitly, you know, there's one that says discourage creation of retail centers outside of downtown, but I don't know if this would be considered a this is a retail center. Yeah, but there's other things that support it, you know, jobs, housing balance, and things like that. So I don't think there's. Anything explicit in the general plan that would say protect this. So yeah. I, I I mean I certainly haven't been on the planning commission for a little while, but I can't think of anything that would prohibit it because it would have become an issue when we had more home-based businesses. And the fact is is that micro business and micro industry is becoming more and more prevalent. I'm actually surprised that it took this the, the, the legislature to have Sonoma County take this on because actually when I was sitting on the Sonoma County Economic Development Board, um this is clearly identified as a place that a uh, development of micro business that then results in the development of big business like tortilla La tortilla factory being mm -hmm. a prime example that that company is big amy's kitchen now a big company people forget they started in their garages so many people um start off small selling food to friends and family and then it balloons and it actually is kind of the the, the backbone of the sonoma county um, food sector. I mean, the, and the, the other factor too is that it's often, I mean, certainly I don't want to be sexist or anything, but oftentimes it's single women who are um, producing this food to support their families and create a business that is sustainable. Um, and they are uh, family uh, sustaining business. So I, I don't want to name another uh, Cloverdale business that actually has a restaurant in Santa Rosa. 
started out this way, making food. Um, and then it, they turned it, and now they've been open for, I would say, 15 years or 20 years. So I think that, that I'm just, I'm surprised that Sonoma County didn't actually lead on getting this moving because it's already a part of our strategic economic development plan for um, for home business and micro businesses. My only feedback would be, uh, you beat me to the punch, is that they, you know, Cloverdale would, would require them to have a business license. And um and register all occupation or just you know just to it say it's exempt from home business, but the business license the business license I mean, just like my home based business you know it's my it's and I have a business license like we do business out of our home and we have even fewer well it's only, it kind of comes and goes but I mean my neighbors don't notice my clients coming and you know um, dropping off computers and picking them up and they don't notice them coming over and doing. You know, initial meetings for web development. They don't, you know, they just they're. I mean, you know, their kids visit more than my clients do. So, <laughs> you know, so I think that if we kind of just keep it um, in uh, in a bucket where it's very similar to what other things that we're already doing, I guess that would be. You know, my only feedback would be that I would like them to have a, a business license and then um, also have a way to plug them into Sonoma County Economic Development Board so that when they are ready for um for financing and for you know this for a business plan so let's face it you just sort of step up and you see if people like their mollies you know and then you write a business plan so <laughs> economic development collaborative exactly well, yeah. exactly well, yeah. they their name exactly that's collaborative so <laughs> 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 i'll say eeb forever yeah. exactly i'll say eeb forever so but but yeah that would be my feedback i don't think and if, if you think it needs to go to the council for just sort of feedback and support i just can't see why we wouldn't support this. Well, it's, it's almost like the county's going to do what they're going to do, right? And yeah. then the Arizona doesn't apply. So I think but, they, just, they were asking to hear from us. Just a little, yeah. yeah. But I think the feedback on that, and that there's nothing in our general plan that's been picked up, but it's our pathway forward would be to kind of model it on our um, base business. And we would still would just ask people to, um, to get a business license and renew it annually. And that would be our, that would be the end of it. Yeah, I, I I don't think it doesn't really require council action per se. Uh, it's just whether to to address whether there's policy that prohibits it. So there you go. It, 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 it's kind of within staff's purview to identify that, and otherwise, like, uh, do they pay sales tax? Uh, no, I, I, don't I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's an issue for the legislation of the state to, to resolve. That's uh, not our problem. If they're going to be charged sales tax, the state's going to, sure. to, to uh, and they may say that for a home based business that the use tax or that the, the because they're likely to be paying less than Costco, they're paying sales tax as a business, then that's covered and that they want, they're, they're more interested in. The economic development <laughs> rather than the sales tax, but let them buy I'm just curious. I, yeah. I really don't see it as a big source of people. It's not a no, source not of yeah. no, it certainly wouldn't be for us. <laughs> so, but uh, can I that good. question will be asked with the legislature. So, Melvin, so, why, why is the state and the county doing this in the first place in terms of regulation? Because, um, you know, like they're doing it anyway. So, why are they trying to formalize it? Because People sell their peach collars and their plum jam and their lemonade stands out front of the house. So I'm just curious why they're trying to formalize it. You but, have to ask them. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, from my, from my my perspective, Rob, uh, it, 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 some county, some cities have just said blanket no. Okay. okay. And, and and I think the, right. the state wanted to kind of clarify that it's county's role, and given that they. Put it in environmental health. I think it's just the real focus on uh, the, the protection of the health of, of health. Yeah, because you know, food food board food board illness is a pretty serious issue, mm -hmm. and just making sure that you're following health regulations. I think that's always the concern we we buy. Until you get so, to know. <laughs> and it's also it's, yeah, it's obviously been an effort to swell the free enterprise and an entrepreneurial spirit. And it's so bring people in from the shadows who yeah. are doing a good job, but yeah. really can't they want to be legit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. That's See, our, I think that's our feedback. We'll um, go on to item two. Okay, uh, item two, uh, and, and I'll, I'll turn this one over to Kevin too. Uh, just background, uh, 
the, the city council uh, updated the uh, mobile home rent control ordinance uh, with kind of more uh, up-to-date uh, requirements and including, you know, putting in um, uh, measures that were more consistent with the county's um, mobile home uh, rent control requirements and providing appropriate oversight. Uh, during that process, one of the uh, tools, additional tools that was identified that could help to protect mobile home parks is uh, whether to establish a, a mobile home park overlay district. Uh, most of our mobile home parks currently, uh, of course, their the rent controls in place based on the council's adoption of the updated ordinance. Uh, but ultimately, the underlying zoning for those is residential. So if in the future, a, a park owner wanted to convert that to single family homes, there's a process for that, they could, but uh, they would not be restricted by zoning. Uh, what some cities have done, um, mo most recently is the city of Petaluma uh, was adopt an overlay ordinance, which uh, put in place additional land use restrictions under the city's police authorities or zoning code. Mm -hmm. uh, the intent of which is to you know make make uh, the the land use more restricted and 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 make it yeah, more challenging should uh, in the future there be a, a proposal to convert that park from its current use of uh, mobile homes to single family. Uh, we don't see any imminent threat now, or I don't think we, we, it's been entertained here by the park owners with the city staff. Uh, but again, this is one additional tool that is available. Uh, I, the most recent being um, the Petaluma. I, they, they, they did undergo or and were subject to uh, litigation for the actions they, they took to establish the overlay districts. We, uh, our city attorney is uh, working on getting a, a, an update on litigation and kind of finding out what the underlying issues were and how that was resolved. Uh, he thinks it was uh, uh, resolved or settled in favor of the city, but I don't know if there, you know, if that was a settlement and what, if, what, you know, what, what if there was any, uh, set, you know, the settlement options that were. Uh, required as part of that uh, case, uh, so that that's something we're still uh, we'll, we'll need to be, yeah, we'll need to determine. Take brain on that one. Um, <laughs> but but that's that that's the premise. Uh, it, it it's here today. We received a, a request from council member uh, to have the the council weigh in on whether to establish an overlay district or not, uh, and. Uh, and, and part following the kind of two-touch rule in our governance manual, it was brought here to keep this, this subcommittee's um, recommendation relative to whether rather to proceed. A uh, couple of thoughts here is uh, is it, it would require um, you know, it's a multi-step process. It would require uh, writing the, the the zoning district, you know, preparing a new. A new district, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then uh, not just establishing the zoning itself for inclusion in the zoning ordinance via zoning amendment would would be actually changing the uh, so one you you could create the district and 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 not do a zone change so you have it on the books in case someone wanted to do it or you know the the kind of the second part of that would be to. Uh, Actually, rezone properties uh, that we or the council recommends be considered as part of the zoning district. So uh, that usually requires you know community outreach process with both property owners. It's also um, expensive. Yes. Yeah. That's a series of public meetings and right. the general plan. At, at times, so a of staff. Right? And 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 it, it, depending on the nature <laughs> and aspect of it. <laughs> Uh, you know, we we have to do, or you know, staff would have to uh, conduct environmental review uh, under CEQA. Um, I think the word you're using is onerous, David. 
It's an it's an onerous undertaking. It's it, it, it is. It would be a it would be a big a big item for our work plan. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll question that. Um, and so uh, it, it's really that's. I'll pause there. It, it's really uh, for this committee to, to discuss, and uh, you know, do you, do you you know ultimately we'll do more research on this and bring it to council for for uh, a formal resolution. But we'd like to get the, the subcommittee's feedback on whether it's uh, beneficial or advantageous, or you'd otherwise like to see us proceed. With this. Yeah, I think uh, we would like to maybe bring to council just some pros and cons about it and, and have a discussion. If you wanted to proceed with it, we go to planning commission for a recommend probably two hearings and then a recommendation back. Yeah, so and there, there, there um, just to be frank, I think there was some contention created with our mobile home park owners with the imposition of the rent control. Uh, that's just my my assessment based on their their reaction. Uh, so I, I I I think it just from a, a, a process perspective, it, it's it's. You know, it, we're we're not going to do it with a friendly set of landowners. Uh, you know, they don't want to look at it as as us imposing uh, additional land use restrictions. So I it. have a, a, a kind of a functional question first, yeah. um, because I think Petaluma is a very different. I'm like, so I'm not saying you know overlays are good, overlays are bad. I'm like, I'm wondering though if what are the conditions that are perhaps unique to Petaluma that kind of push them more in that overlay and do we really follow the same um, set of do we have, still have the same set of conditions like are, we, are there mobile home parks more um dispersed well, or, well, maybe they're like, more, 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 more to convert, right? conversion are they more are they more geographically dispersed i mean the ones i'm thinking of are the ones on you know Cloverdale, rv park palms and briarwood and I missed, I missed that's it. That's all And that's it. Yeah, okay, that's all three. That's all three. And they're also, their current zoning, I mean, uh, you know, Cloverdale RV is in uh, transit-oriented development. Um, okay. Palms is, is, is it considered residentially close to the Like that. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's R1. It sounds like the Shirley Brown. Oh, really? um, so R1. Okay, and then Briarwood would be probably R one since it's just. Yeah, I think it might that, that might be R two. That might be R two. Okay, so that's kind of like where I'm just. So my first question would be, you know, did they have a different motivation for maybe doing that overlay? Could we maybe handle a little differently for to a different situation? So just. Yeah, I'm just in Petaluma. I think they've got the big management companies and all that stuff. The parks, we don't. We have, right. you know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. and that's where the, I think the that's... development pressures are different. There right. are the center there for exactly. the periphery. And because just like the place where my grandpa I used to live all over the highway, it was in the middle of nowhere and nowhere near an incorporated town. Well, now it's like Windsor oh, yeah. gets, gets around. So, I mean, the, just the conditions have really, have really changed. Mm -hmm. And the development pressures have really changed. Yeah. I would, uh, this is an aside to close a mobile home park is a big process yeah. that is a uh, state. It goes through HCD. Yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah. Dave and I went to one of those teaser and um, they have to provide lots of money and relocation. So there's been several public hearings. I mean, it's, it's a legal deal. document. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, we, if you guys are okay with it, we can put something together and bring it to council. We can talk about it more. Or, yeah, I, I guess the, the thing that I did for, for, for Cloverdale, I mean, I would think that the exist, our existing zoning, um, we also have kind of talked about it in the community too, is that uh, times have really changed. Mobile home parks that were, you know, privately owned, they were, they were for profit, and the market didn't exert the kind of development pressure that we have now. Things are, and so, you know, one of the things that I've kind of been talking about, some of my, some of my colleagues at Cal Cities is that what are we doing about a glide path? Because these are not deep, this is this is de facto affordable housing, but it's not deep restricted in any way. Um, and so that's probably the bigger, more important question is that we have to be realistic about the development pressures on these properties. Um, if we said, you know, we're going to, well, you know, Cloverdale RV, I would be perfectly happy to leave it in transit-oriented development because we probably get denser, far more improved, far more um, stable housing there if it ever does become developed. But the uh, Briarwood is beautiful. I mean, my gosh, I've been to a book club there. How many times that place is paradise? Um, <laughs> but there could be a point where they're pressured, there's development pressure for single family housing. So do we want to say, 
um, that we want to apply um, R2, which would make it a bit more, more easily available to, to multifamily housing. Whose timer is going off? It's not mine. So, not anyway, not our, yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, but so maybe present those as options is that you know, we have a very different set of conditions, especially very different set of development pressures in, in here than in Petaluma. It's, it's going to happen. There's going to be development pressure. It's just, you know, we can sit here in our bubble and say, oh, it's never going to happen in my lifetime and 10 years down the road. The council's going to be facing it. And it'd be better if we had a really cogent well-formed basis of a policy rather than get um, caught. And I, you know, the perfect yeah. example of that, David, is the wine storage at the south end of town. We should have been busily, we should have been rezoning that. We should have really been examining, having a plan for that. And we were, when the development came in, we were flat-footed and unprepared. So I think that the best policy forward, being kind to future council members and future staff is to, you know, say, let's look at what, is in line with the community vision for um, affordable housing and for the levels of density that we want in those particular places, come up with a good solid policy that's not being developed under a lot of pressure and you know, put something that's workable on the books now. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that uh, I don't know how much more protection mm -hmm. we just, honestly, that because in Windsor, that one south of Oliver's, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. They Windsor already does have mobile North. park. Yeah. North, North, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, they had a mobile home park zone. So they had that, but they were still able to so I Yeah. But we might want to really consider think of it in terms of like glide path um for for um what do we want for multifamily housing? What do we want for density in those areas and zone appropriately? Um and like you said, if you want to close a mobile home park, you better Smart you better bring your game face because yeah. it's you know it's a huge deal. That means that it's a huge real estate deal, and you know, and they have to provide for um, the residents. But what I'm what I'm seeing in you know uh, mobile home parks across California is that because they aren't um, uh, deed restricted, they're they're just they're fragile. And so we, we have to be realistic about that. Is that it's a that's our de facto affordable housing? What are we going to do to make sure that we have senior um, housing, veteran housing, uh, housing for working families um, that might be that might be different from from mobile home, current mobile home parks and making sure that it's sounds so that they can't just go to make you know, make those none of those places are like positioned to be like McMansion single no. family. They're not that's, that's just not realistically the market isn't going to determine that, but they are positioned to where they could be um you know the Briarwood and Palms could be R2, which would allow for a mixture of single family yeah. and uh multifamily housing. And they're and it's they're and they're they're really well located right on you know transportation lines. Um Palms is near um, the depot in downtown, um, so that might be what we want to see. Is that there might if we? I don't know. I don't know what you can do too, as far as saying that we are interested in affordable housing projects in those locations. That might be anathema to some of the advocates for um, for mobile home park residents, though. Yeah. So it's a it's a tough issue. Yeah. It's a very tough issue. But I just don't, I don't think that you're with just with property rights in California, you're not going to be able to prevent people from um, changing uh, you know, the mobile home park into you know, into something else. Yeah. It's, it's just really expensive. Yeah. So it would you know it have to really yeah. make sense economically for someone to try to try to do it. But I think it's easy to sit here now and say that, but in ten years, yeah, exactly. I mean, it might change. It might change. Yeah. Um, so that's a general plan question, really, is what kind of density do we want to see in those locations? So that's, I think that would be, I, I'm not sure, I don't, I, I don't hear a reason why overlay would be appropriate for us. I think we have sufficient zoning, um, and maybe we just examine that and, and tighten it up where we need to. Yeah, and I think it's it's uh, approaching the, the time horizon where uh, council in the not too far off future is going to want to consider General plan? A general, general plan. Uh, uh, a new yeah. general plan. Yeah. I mean, I think we're getting close to the time horizon. I mean, it, but it's, it's a big effort uh, and it's costly. 
And so that's always the context in which you have to decide is this the time now to start that process. Yeah, right. Um, but overlays are just essentially spot zoning. Spot zoning is never a good idea for a community. It just, you know, you really want to look at it holistically. Is it, is it, or the benefits worse for the cost? Exactly. That's, 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 that's a good thing that it costs me. Yeah. 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 And, and that, what I see is a lot of staff time on um, yeah. something on a process that probably could be addressed as part of the a general plan revision. Yeah. I think we, during, like David said, during the rent control, we did discuss this and we we're bringing it forward. So I would like to bring some, like yeah. I said, pros and cons. And yeah. So you guys can have a. Yeah. Or a view of what it what it takes and what it does. Well, when it, what I see is that the, the rent control process that we had to uh, that we and we really needed to 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 engage in is it's part of the glide path for really addressing what the future of mobile homes are in California because I don't think that we can maintain small a affordable housing with market right, under in the, in the current market. It's like it's going to have to be deeper. if you want it, you, it's got to be deconstructed. Yeah. Absolutely. So. I think those days are over. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Any other comments or questions about um, this, this item? If not, all right, let's uh, let's move on. Sorry, let's see. What's our, our page two, Mike? Standing items? Did I skip anything? Oh, you're on task. There you go. Oh, come on. All right, I'm on task. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, it's because I, I have my coffee. <laughs> so under uh, planning update, community development log. Uh, yeah, we uh, gave the same report to the school district last night. We haven't received any new development applications. Uh, there's some rumors floating around, but I don't know. If, you know, about some prime pieces of property in town, and some developers are interested, but I don't know that it's even worth. We have some um, bringing up from property in Arkansas. Yeah. I don't know if you're interested. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be there. All right. All right. I will pencil you in. All right. I went to um, annexation six. Oh, six acre water and Cloverdale, South Cloverdale. Yeah. Uh, on with regards to six acres, council has approved the annexation agreement. Uh, we we have a draft for South Cloverdale. That one really hasn't uh, bubbled up uh, for for discussion by council yet, because uh, there's still a lot of question marks. Uh, staff is working with. Uh, the the state um, and the uh, appointed engineer, which is uh, the firm of GHD, on um, providing the technical data that's required by LAFCO for the annexation application. Uh, some of the technical data is around the uh, kind of wastewater use, wastewater generation, and water water usage uh, based on the number of residents and. There's already service there, so th th that's um, uh, GHD has requested a scope amendment from the state, and uh, mm -hmm. those processes just need to take a long time to get formalized and approved. Uh, so it, it's a work in progress just to um, uh, get, get the annexation application buttoned up and ready for submittal to LAFCO at this point. So we're just kind of in a holding pattern, uh, moving things along. Uh, council has otherwise given provided the necessary direction to the staff to move forward with the annexation application. Uh, one of the, the, the um, issues too that we're working through is we, we believe the state should be responsible for paying the annexation or last go fee. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, yeah. And, and, <laughs> their, their request was, well, city, you can ask them to waive the fee. Uh, uh, and the and they water. they came back and said, well, that will require formal action of the Lafco board, which is this is know, like getting your windshield replaced. And man, it's just the row runner. And, and we this. we've submitted our uh, request for reimbursement for staff times, which goes back to just 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that's pending, and, and that's about uh, uh, thirty thousand dollars in revenue for us mm -hmm. uh, that we're, we're waiting on the state to. Uh, Respond. Yeah, Jeez. putting together the LAFCO application is like there's a lot of technical yeah. things that are needed. Right. Yes, and we're all well, who's doing it? Like we, Sam, we can't put together a map that's going to meet the criteria. That's so we're wrangling over. Yeah, the county surveyor has to. It has to be a uh, you know an actual record of survey map that's checked by the county surveyor. You do that, right? Ultimately, yeah. 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 you have to prove it. 
ultimately has to go to the state and the state surveyor to check the right. accuracy because right. it, it modifies the tax boundaries. So right. it, there's a lot of data points. Uh, it's not a, it, there's not a lot of firms that do that work. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not something <laughs> that finding staff has ever done. Um, you have to actually be a registered land surveyor, yeah. uh, which we, we don't have on staff. So anyway, so that's all in the process. Is, should that just be contract? I mean, if we get stuck with it, can we just contract it out to our Ultimately, local survey? We would have to. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. trying not to get stuck. Yeah, even our local surveyor, uh, we well, found it's it, 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 it's kind of specialized. Yeah. Uh, the 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 data that the state, particularly the state, wants is uh, on the, on on the boundary mod because it's a, a modification of the city boundaries. Mm -hmm. They they it, it it's uh, well, it it's a little more tech. It's a little more tech. It impacts it. Right. Yeah. I hope. I guess, but still. It goes through multiple multiple processes. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. You could put that together or more and pay for it. Okay. Well, keep um, fighting the good fight. <laughs> well, speaking of yeah. boundaries, how about urban growth boundaries? Yeah. Well, this one hopefully isn't as hard. It's yeah, the, qualifying for the ballot. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Uh, our, uh, the impartial analysis was submitted by our city clerk is prepared by our, our city attorney um, as as impartial analysis are so it's all fact based our uh, mayor did prepare an argument in favor of uh, that was uh, submitted to the register of voters as well so uh, we haven't heard yet whether there will be a rebuttal or not uh, and if so we, we have not we have a brief opportunity to provide a a rebuttal to the rebuttal, I think, is how it works. But um, uh, so far, I'm not I, even going to curse it by saying <laughs> asking the question. So. <laughs> so it's uh, it'll be it'll go before the voters in November. It's right. Measure C C C C C C. That's right. a happy sounding. Right. Yeah. Was the city proposing stuff to get the voters on board to say vote oh, yes or no? It's can. neutral. We have to be fact based. Right. Okay. Um, anybody who's a member of the public who's watching today right. who'd be interested in promoting this <laughs> item on its <laughs> merits would be uh, more than um, uh, able to do that. Right, David? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else on item Not moving to the flood master plan. Yeah. So uh, just so please, we... our, is our airport. Just... Uh, well, it, it is kind of, it is kind of why. And so the uh, Sonoma Water has been leading up the planning process for development of a you know kind of wide flood master plan. Uh, it, it's taken some time. They have published a a, a draft uh, that hasn't been released to the public yet, but they wanted uh, and sought public input. We provided comments uh, on the draft on uh, Thursday last week. Uh, with the assistance of our our city engineer, uh, there's there's kind of some you know technical issues to, to address. Um, so we we're we're continuing to monitor and follow the process uh, and provide our our comments. Uh, you know some of the issues include some of the things that are being addressed is you know stream maintenance uh, and you know what are the hurdles to make sure that our, our local river channels are free of debris and what is required to do that. And the master plan in theory should help with getting, um, once CEQA is done for that, you know, getting some of the environmental done that we can, hopefully we can rely on if we need to go in and do some sediment removal or uh, the vegetation removal for, for flood control. So uh, it, it continues to move forward. And I, I, my assumption is that, uh, uh, Sonoma Water with the, the assistance of they they have a consulting engineering firm HDR uh, will will take our com comments under advisement make necessary changes and that will become a, a public draft and then they'll then they'll open it up for public comment yeah review yeah. great that's 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 what I, I believe okay. and I five. Uh, really, really, no, no updates. Uh, we just continue to tr to track the, the SBA project. Okay. And item six is dead. Yeah. So I think, uh, Madam Chair, if, if with your support and, and, and the Vice Mayor, um, go ahead and remove this remove, item. Remove it for two years because nope. that's probably when it's coming back up. 
It's not going away. It's not going away. So, Mike, that'll be item F6 update on BAPA. Reduce go ahead and with that. So, an item F6, is that something that the city supports? Because, as I understand it, the city has met its obligations for. It's, it's not. It's not. Yeah, we we hadn't taken the left hand legislative position on it. Yeah. Item seven. Uh, director's report. I'm going to turn over Hector to give us an update on the uh, sheep grazing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So you better hide that picture. <laughs> <There's no laughs> yes. I know the goats will too. <laughs> one of the things you discover about about goats and sheep is that you know, that's really the new. It's really the new. It's the new John Deere. Exactly. We're going to get rid of John Deere. No. <laughs> it's, a new, it's a new form of vegetation management that's, that, that works really, very well. We, you will, yeah. We, uh, we, we had a, like a pilot test project there. That really but it worked for thousands of years, right. and now we're doing it again. We're back. <laughs> yeah, we, we had that, that smaller pilot project there at the River Park where we had a herd of 200, 200 sheep, uh, Mexican sheep and goats. And uh, near the water plant, which is really critical. And I mean, they devoured everything. Yeah, they, they were there four days. They did a good job up there. Uh, well, the and, sheep do all the low stuff, and then the goats get yeah, up and get the yeah. bread. They, so they actually do different uh, levels on the, uh, yeah, they get up into the terrain. Like the goats are like, they eat blackberries. They eat blackberries, poison oak. Poison oak. They eat all that stuff. Like, you get in there. Yeah. And uh, especially, you know, you, you know, using the goats for grazing, you get, you know, you get a lot of times you get, you know, there's a lot of critters living in those areas, so you, you know, definitely be, you know, protecting those little, little animals and whatever mm -hmm. so that, that, that helps. So, so not too long ago, uh, we applied for a, a, for a grant through uh, Sonoma, Sonoma Resource Conservation District, um, Landsmart. Uh, I think the, I think the, the grant is funded by the California State Coastal Conser uh, Conservancy Wildfire Resilience Program. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were awarded the grant. Uh, uh, David, David, uh, Mary David Kelly did an awesome job with the application. Um, uh, and Kevin and I, and David as well, we met several times with Landsmart out in the open spaces. Uh, I think it was three or four meetings. And really, they wanted, uh, well, we were, uh, kind of preaching to them is that we wanted to be, uh, I guess a guinea pig for pilot projects. <laughs> um, they really loved the way the meetings went. Uh, they love the situation as far as what we got at Soda Springs Ranch with the residents around there. Uh, so we were granted thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. Yeah. Congratulations! So thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. So the plan is to we have three potential uh, uh, spots there at Soda, uh, Soda Springs Ranch. One of them is right uh, there at the end of uh, First Street there. Backs up to uh, the residents there at home. Second there. Street. Second Street. <laughs> and then and the other one around, oh, yeah, around, around the other side. Around the home. other side, yeah. yeah Actually, side. First Street then runs right into it too. Yeah, Fort Street runs, yeah. So, uh, and the, what is it called? Fort Street. God, how do we Fort put Street. that to be an annual thing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, That's I, mean, I know it's a grant, but I mean, how do we, how can we throw that in and say, okay, let's make this a your guts are showing up on this date. You know what I mean? That's, I mean, right. we can use it every year. Every once, year. You, right. once you get it under right. control, it takes a lot less to contain it. Right. I think that that's probably the impetus of the, the grant. Yeah, some of the aspects is they want to make sure, I mean, they call it pilot because they, one, they want to, uh, they see this as an opportunity to uh, educate the community. Mm -hmm. and, and I think our community is pretty educated, but, you know, like just to, to be able to see it in action right. uh, as, as part of it uh, and, and go through the process of, of implementing the program so that it, be, it can be something that becomes formalized. Uh, the, 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 one of the uh, grazing managers came out and said, uh, uh, Petaluma's going full tilt with their grazing program and they're even using uh, sheep and, and the goats in some of their urban parks. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and they're finding that just the tremendous benefits of uh, alleviating staff time and the, the ease of managing some of the herds. Right. So, you know, that, that'd be something we would be able to learn from. There, there are fertilization. No, right. 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 They, 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 they aerate the soil, they yeah. fertilize, yeah, they bring good. all of these additional benefits. They, they, don't, they, they don't damage, and you know, right. uh, they don't do damage to the bird population and to the, the that's the creatures and yeah, and one of the things yeah. too, as far as like sort of the right, there there are some areas that 
because physically we can't get any yeah. equipment. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's just it's too steep. It's, it's dangerous for for oh, okay, it's like, and it'll just go right through there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're planning on uh, we should, if everything goes according to plan, we should be receiving the funding around uh, October. Mm -hmm. I want to, uh, and then of course we were included to implement with the chief and those will come in sometime after spring and, and start working. <laughs> yeah, so what they're saying about the, the neighbor, who's the neighbor who has the goats? Leland. So he's, li he's literally above Soda Springs Ranch. Oh. So we're trying to find a way to see if you can just open the gates and right. let them loose out here. So save up a little money on the yeah, station. So we have to get out of the fucking first. <laughs> no. Well, one of the things they, they talked about was, you know, uh, again, this be something we could evaluate is do you, you, you the city could offer, you know, an, an exchange of yeah. land for grazing, you know, and it's kind of a yeah. quid pro quo. Well, it's, 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 like, it's good for it's good for that for the off season for, or something you know, yeah. for them to have land to put their animals and graze, yeah. and it obviously. Comes with the benefit of reducing it's called, the it's called, it's called pasture rotation. Yeah. <laughs> Again, pasture thousands pasture. of years. <laughs> one, one, <laughs> yeah, so that's what I was going to say. So I mentioned another positive thing is positive. Uh, he, I know that the owner, he goes to the gym every I see him on the gym. You go to the gym? And he, yeah. And then so he's planning to us. It's a good one. <laughs> so, I've never been there. So he, he said, <laughs> Tamales. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so he he's he's a really nice guy. He says that he's willing to work with us in our budget. Uh he did mention about what uh, did, this is uh C Matter Kelly just mentioned about maybe the commercial year ready for us, it just he does he has a huge contract with county regional parks. Okay. And that's originally how I, I met him on one of those meetings. And uh he was like, Yeah, I'm local well, I'm local real much. Really. So we just kind of talk, started talking there at the time and that's how a yes, he's a, he's okay. local, local business and all that. So that's uh, so that's one one great benefit. He he did mention that he would need to work with us with our budget, whether it's just through this grant or whether it's just with the general fund money that we put aside for vegetation management. Yeah, yeah. Wow, job openings for sheep herders and voters. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, okay. and and, and, it's, and it's, 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 yeah. And as an aside, um, one of the uh, it challenges. Is the legislation requiring use of all electric equipment and That's cool. yeah. uh, you know, especially in the open we spaces? Can, how, you know, how do you get up there, <laughs> right? With uh, electric meters, yeah. and yeah. It, 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 it's going to be very, it's going to be very. Well, tough. if there's such a there's such a fire danger in using gas powered and you know and other um, equipment like that, any anywhere we yeah. can start a spark and start a fire. I mean. It's just dragging a chain. We've already seen a huge fire this year, just but you know, an accident. And so, uh, anytime that you can go low, the lower the tech, the better. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So that's very exciting. You know, like like we were just saying. I think there's a possibility there might be some extra more funding there with them in the future. In the future, I I've always been very transparent with them. They send me any form or anything that yeah. any program or anything. You know, we'll be your pilot project. We got 500 acres now, of open space and. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, yeah, that's something work. you can really work with too, yeah. like for a pilot. That that's much more attractive than just the river right. So, but you really should be committed for the the vision that you're um, you're pursuing and and that you're you're building because you know when we included the portion in the general plan to for the vision to acquire the hillside, it was you know even before this was before 2017, and it was for fire safety and for right. uh, watershed protection. And it's really integrating our parks and recreation with our fire safety and water quality efforts. And so and, and this going after this grant and this style of land management, I think Misty said it best when she's like, you're really taking on a county parks sort of type facility, yeah. but the city's doing it. So we have to change how we think about, you know, this yeah. is not, yeah, this is not for park or City Park with the play structures. This is land management. Right. So that that takes a, a, a you know that takes a real adjustment in how um, you know we set up our the practices going forward. It really should be commended for the multiple benefits that all of this does. I know. Yeah, thirty five thousand dollar grant. How can we get this to you know how how can we pay for grazing in the future? But we have to look at it as it's not just 
recreation activity, it's fire safety, it's water right. quality, it's, um, you know, basic, and another thing that it is, is um, it, those residential properties adjacent to these parks are going to be highly sought after, just like they are all over yeah. California mm -hmm. and all over the country. People want to live next to parks. The, the, the property values really maintain, main, you know, they, 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 they stay up or they, they stay uh, steady or they go up because those housing near parks and amenities is um, never going to lose its value. Oh. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. well done. Well done. Yeah. And it was uh, the team ever the team ever dog, but I woke that yeah. dog down when I'm there. Not doing his job. He was sleeping. I literally woke up yeah. and poked him. Well, it's not supposed to be gardens, guys. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's do it here. Yeah. 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 Oh, he started laughing. I thought he was like, You're like, You're a dog, and it's like, Yeah, he's tired. Yeah, he's been working hard. He's a working tired man. It's funny. He was on his union mandated break, and you uh, were like, He was. Oh, yeah. Give me a little one. Oh, my God. Okay, well, no, but that's really great news, yeah. and congratulations. And I, I, I know you're going to continue to be, you know, innovative and, um, and, you know, you're, you're spending time on valuable, valuable projects. So, Thank you so much for, for everything you're doing. Yeah, because parks great. management and land management, two different yeah. things. Way different. Yeah. Yeah. Forest management, all this stuff. You know, we thought of them as being very separate and, and different. And, and in, our, in, our, in our rural city, they aren't. You're going to have you, you got playgrounds with play equipment and football, and you've got wide open cougar country. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, we have to be ready for everything. Absolutely. Yeah, we had to, I'm sorry, we had a meeting with Sierra this morning to talk about playground, tree inspections, playground mm -hmm. inspections. And all that stuff. No, that's okay. Mavericks. Yeah, that's all, all that's all that's all gonna get handled. So thank you so much for doing that. And um, good job on the grant, David. Yeah. Thanks. Well, and uh Madam Chair, if it's okay to move on, just roll yes, the under direct. Absolutely. Let's get moving. A couple of things that I uh, wanted to touch on. Um uh we received a uh, application, pre-application review from Outsider Valley Resorts. Kevin's coordinating that with the developers just to get uh, particularly fire and public works input on roads and fire infrastructure for the uh, Esmeralda's land company's proposal there. So that, that uh, uh, we're, I'm glad they, fire, they filed the pre-application pay the fee. So uh, we'll be looking at probably next step uh, establishing um, a reimbursement agreement to cover our staff time for looking at that as we get deeper, assuming we get deeper in that. And uh, just today, we had a meeting with a, um, a bond council regarding the Alexander Valley Healthcare Project. They are seeking, uh, uh, I think, it, it, their their form of, uh, I think it's like like lease revenue bonds. Uh, um, I explain. Yeah, and for you guys to explain. They, you know, they, 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 um, they yeah. uh. The, the request is, is for the city to serve as the conduit financing authority, similar to uh, what we, what the council action that was uh, taken for the uh, Alexander Valley apartment project on mm -hmm. Osby Road. Uh, it, this is a, it's a little more involved, uh, but uh, it, we are currently scheduling to bring that to council. Uh, the second meeting in September will be a resolution approving. It'll be a TEFRA hearing, like it was like what we did for the the um, the apartment project, and there will be a proposed resolution or a resolution proposing approval of the the bond docs. Again, no risk to the city, and there will be a uh, just like there was for for that project uh, a, a fee that the uh, revenue that comes to the city for that yeah that process. The way. The gentleman explained it to us was if the city is the conduit versus them using another entity, the Alexander Valley will, will save a lot of money that way. You mean like with, with the Northern Stem County Hospital District be an uh, alternate or something like that? Or yeah, I think they have to go through the state maybe. Oh, okay. And the state and it's through a state community uh bond program. All of it. Explain it. Yeah. And and so I I Asking for a memo 
that I can share with council yeah. uh, so that you have time in advance of the hearing mm -hmm. and, and the agenda report to you know just share your concerns. We will we'll, we'll ask you to reply all to all council members, but uh, in that way we can, if there are any issues or concerns about it, that we can we can uh, iron that out uh, in advance. But that 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 doesn't affect our credit. We're not on the hook to pay anything back. Right, which is right. Good. And the, the state backs the bonds, so they're when you say double A rated. Yeah, double double A minus. So they're they're in effect state state bonds. So. Okay. That's it. Those are just two things I just want to add to because uh, yeah. those are both things we'll be we're uh, mm -hmm. Kevin's leading up the pre application with the resort project. Uh, and then we'll all be coordinating with uh, uh, a lot of it's going to be city attorney review on the TEPRA hearing for the for the Alexander Valley Healthcare Project. All right. Those are some big bites. Yeah. If you're heavy hitters right there. Right. Uh, uh, there, there, there's been 35 million bucks. Yeah. It's spending yeah. a lot of time on that. Yeah. I bet. So, well, actually, I've not had my follow up with, with that. Yeah. I, yeah looking forward to it. So I would imagine that there have been um, some new regulations around uh, fire safety and things um, since that 2009 specific plan was approved. And you they know, want to do sort of alternative roads, yeah. which the fire district has already reviewed them. So we're just going to have a discussion about these roads and if they're going to be acceptable. They're all going to be private. Yeah. So that's good. So uh, that's what Devin requested. So We've got plans in there, and so we'll have that discussion. That's good. Give us some feedback. That's actually, yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Anything else on standing items? Not move on to. We don't have any uh, transportation update on Bright Program. I don't think there's any no, no. news, but probably active transportation. Uh, uh, yeah, the, this it's in draft. Check in. Already, yeah. <laughs> uh, I talked to Dana and. Um, so it's in it's going to be in draft form in September sent to SETA and us for review and comment. So right. they're making progress. I mean, they had the workshop. I think yeah. they attended. Mm -hmm. um, so we can just see to see what they came up with. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's also helping to inform uh, uh, the update of our circulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, kind of, I mean, well, and it's very, it's maybe greatly impacted by um, the new development, including Alexander Valley Resort, Bomb Gardner, um, Alexander Apartments, and yeah, um, it's very, really, very timely. Yeah, uh, that's great news. Okay. And update on recreation. Survey yeah. results. Is that yeah, it's yeah. in your packet. That's right. very cool. That was very cool. The we, you know, is we, we did. With the previous Ferber Park survey, uh, we put it in the newsletter. It was it was in about eight or nine weeks of the newsletter uh, with the link to the survey and uh, including your packets of survey results. So I'll turn that over to Kevin and Mike. Mike wants to. Uh, 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 we'll can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real yeah. quick just so you can see it. I'll go through pretty quickly. <laughs> Really muffled. How about just how about phone. now? I you can hear me. I just here, here we go. Also, I, I'm yeah, <laughs> uh, I just want to confirm you can see my screen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. So this is our new slideshow um, format, which you can see Ooh. momentarily. Um, <laughs> All right. So our recreation survey results. Um, we got them. I'll say that uh, Kevin, Hector, and I um, created the questions, did quite a bit of marketing and outreach for it. We put it online and distributed it via social media. Chamber of Commerce helped out with that. We had it in our weekly newsletters. Thanks, David and Kevin, for posting those. Um, we printed flyers at the grocery stores, kiosks throughout the city, um, at CPAC, local gym. We sent it to the um, Cloverdale Unified School District Superintendent for distribution to the student body. I'm not, I can't confirm that that happened. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a lot of uh, youth involved, um, as many as I was hoping. And in fact, we didn't get as many people as we got involved. We had more people on the Ferber Park um, as far as responses go. You can see that we had it open for quite a while, but we only got 311 responses. But those responses are very um, helpful as far as uh, what people are looking for in recreation. Um, this kind of just gives you an age demographic. I'm going to again go through these pretty quickly. 
Um, the questions were, do you currently travel to other municipalities to utilize our recreation? And a resounding yes. The majority of people are leaving our city and spending money elsewhere because we don't currently have very many at all, <laughs> if at all, um, recreation activities sponsored by the city. So that is something we're trying to change so that a lot of that uh, money is spent here instead of people having to leave, um, kind of the point of this survey in general. But how often would you anticipate participating in recreation departments? Um, quite a few weekly, monthly, a few rarely, and a couple of nevers. Um, what days, times are most convenient for you to attend? It was kind of all over the board, but really a resounding weekend in the morning, weekends in the afternoon. The weekends is something that we're going to try to target for week weekday evenings, which was as expected. Um, what types of programs would you like to see offered in the future? You can see I had quite a range. Um, you actually can't even see them all here. Um, a lot of health and wellness, uh, a lot of outdoor activities, social events, things like paint nights. Um, what I did here was kind of look, we looked at some, what some other cities offer, um, both large and small, as far as uh, the type of cities they have and recreation programs. Um, but yeah, it was across the board, all kinds of programs. A lot of interest. Um, you can see different way of uh, showing the figures here. Yeah, yeah. historical societies to do it. Yeah, actually, that's that's a. The cemetery, Mike? We're talking about the cemetery. Yeah, that's what I thought. That was actually something I participated in one in Santa Rosa back when I worked in recreation there. They're they're hot ticket um during Halloween and whatnot. They actually oh, yeah. something I kind of thought we'd work with maybe CPAC. Um there's things where there's either tours where it's just kind of informational, but we did one in Santa Rosa um called Lamplight Tours, which were really popular. They sold out really fast, but basically a theater company similar to CPAC would put on um not a play, but they'd, they'd actually dress up like figures, prominent figures in Cloverdale's history and be up in the cemetery. You would do a walking tour throughout it and you'd have a tour guide with a lamp and that's what they call it, lamp light. Um, and they were, they were really fun. Um, it was something that I think that working, I talked to CPAC about it a little bit, but in collaboration cool. with them, that's one of the programs that I was it's interested in. Yeah, Susan, who's not, who's been on the planning commission with me, she she did that with historical society. Oh, she dressed up in costume, yeah. and she good. was married to Mark Tuma. If you remember, mm -hmm. you remember Susan? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And she, she used to um, dress up in period costume and give tours, and it was a fundraiser for the historical society. That'd be cool because there's so many really old. Really, oh, it's it's, it's, fun. It really is. It's underutilized. I know it's not even on a You might have to have that. Do you think people would be annoyed? That like you would bring people buried up there. So let's keep them on the trail. There's a trail system. Keep them on the trail. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they. That's why they have to be hosted and led. It's yeah. not a. But um, uh, one of one of many ideas that we've had that we want to want to look towards. Um, you can kind of see a lot of people were they were able to vote multiple times, just what they were interested in. But there's a lot of interest. Um, how would you prefer to receive information about future recreation programs? Was something that I was really interested in. Um, I was happy to see that our website was pretty high up there. The weekly newsletter was high up there and social media was high up there. Those are three things that we can currently and are currently doing. Um, the other ones that the one that got the highest was a recreation guide catalog, which is something that we can try to build. We were looking at something similar probably to what Windsor does. Um, I don't have an example off the top of my right now, but. Probably uh, just put updates, might just put it in Cloverdale Connect and just mm -hmm. like these are the, you know, the, the current like monthly schedule or. Yeah. Yeah, and I go, for God's sake, go to the website. Totally. Mike, also, I've seen it really successful in a lot of towns is those, when it says fun run, I know it's only 27.8%, but fun run, a lot of the cities came up with, you know, before, you know on Thanksgiving, you do a turkey trot, yeah. and eight to whatever. And, yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. This. yeah. yeah. And, and, sure. Rebecca, we did not know. And well, they kind of, if, so Re Rebecca used to be the farm. Had, 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 good. Yeah. yeah. And Hector, Hector and I were talking about doing one of those because there's a lot of those fun runs. We want, we were thinking of doing a trail run maybe up in Porterfield Creek. Yeah. Uh, right. Some we of the do, running groups. Like, that, so do Ranch, so do Springs Ranch is open to you park to park. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah and those those kind of fundraisers, like I know, um, you know, I've done a few of them. I participated in a few. They're they're pretty good ways to uh, generate some revenue, but really just to get the community out and about, and they they can be a lot of fun. So that's definitely on our uh, to do. Um, well, we have you know um, some 
we've just mentioned them, some uh, nonprofits who are looking for sources of income. And I think that if we can help them to partner, to, then maybe they can be the beneficiaries. Maybe we can be a partner, but they can be a beneficiary for on Thanksgiving Day for a trip to trot, yeah. park, you know, park, park runs before it gets too hot, yeah. or after it's hot. Course, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, those kinds of things. And yeah. so, it, and if we partner with those those nonprofits that are, you know, looking for some some revenue, that would be really good. I think that the community would be excited about it. And if, would want to come from outside of the community and right yeah. and that's one of the goals with those for sure is to get people from outside to come here yeah. and see how cool because they don't need to be like i mean the bigger races is its own thing the ask you toward mine but it's its own thing and they're they're at a certain level the right. fun runs can be a little more cash yeah we're, we're definitely looking for the fun runs <laughs> at first most part, we try. Like, like, yeah. like, yeah. like, yeah. and people just ship. They come from everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's all over. Like the Portico Creek open says, we have perfect. Yeah. Parks. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. there's different like yeah. trails that are like first exactly. the two bridges trails not hard. It's like yeah. easy run, easy hiking. It's just and like, then like, the it's third one. Like and there's loops. Yeah. It's just as good. I mean, it's just as good as it's, it's a lot smaller. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's, it's distance distance wise. But it's like our facility is just as good as oh, yeah. you know, these well like established that. runs. Yeah. We have that open space through near the edge. We have a little yeah. little barbecue there in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that's not listed there that I've gotten a few uh, phone calls on my office, which I think I mentioned to Mike and Kevin last time we met here to talk about this survey, is a, a puppy, what do you call a puppy Halloween custom party thing at the dog park. Where oh, you know the puppies dress up, they have a dog already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had 70 <laughs> dogs in it last so year. The person that called me. Yeah, the person that called me called me nine times in two hours. And then I'm like, and I called, I finally called her back. I said, sorry, I was like, the chamber about. And then I said, I said, it's a great idea. I mean, it's a great idea. You get the, the puppies to dress up. I got, I have a couple of dogs that dress them up. I know, people love it. Oh, right. Right. I'm going to keep us on this presentation just so I can close it because it's our it's a slide we're showing and then we can go into a discussion. Um, so next was question seven, program ideas. These were coming from the public. So there's quite a few ideas in there that they were interested in um, for us to look at. Um, question eight, there was additional comments. Um, these were more things that they were looking for in the community, more um, infrastructure wise. So that's, you know, a lot of interest times 12 disc golf course, which we th we were kind of looking at potentially at the new open space, a year round pool, something we had a lot of people interested in, teen center clubhouse, um, public tennis courts was a big one, skate park had a few, um, and then a lot of uh, additional improvements to a couple of parks, Ferber, Tarman, and whatnot. Um, at top of Soda Springs Ranch is going to be fantastic. Oh, there, it's actually it's a place where it's like you can get up there. There's open and flat spots, and we can partner with Sonoma State or the JC to do. You know, yeah, we've had we've had there's a couple of groups um, there for the for disc golf that are um, you know private groups and whatnot that have even offered to help us uh, yeah. plan out a course because they're very interested in what that's something that disc golf. You know, I'm a disc golfer too. That would bring a lot of people to here. They are destinations. They, you know, people have apps dedicated to them as far as where they are. And people travel to those towns specifically to check out those courses. But I think that's definitely something You're that not um... one of them and he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, right? Uh, well, and they love, they love like Sonoma, but they are always complaining. It's like, well, there's no restaurant, there's no bar. Like, yeah. yeah. So uh, they're like, well, you're surrounded by wine tasting, right? Yeah. But no, they yeah. no, they want to go and have a beer at the brew pub, at the you know. And so, yeah, if we could get that appropriate. That be that would be huge. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and then on one of the last questions was if the people are interested in being a class instructor, because you know it's hard for us to find folks and um, these were the ones that people listed that were interested so I have their contact information obviously not putting it up here but we're going to be reaching out to them to start um, you know getting some programming going um, and then so the next steps is something that we're looking at is some logo and branding specific to recreation typically cities kind of have you know whether it's you know a little mascot or kind of a different logo that's a little more fun and not as generic as the city. Um, it's something that we might be bringing forward um, in the near future. Some realistic deliverables, kind of a five-year plan of what we can actually see recreation doing with the limited funding that we currently have for it. Um, contract instructors, staffing volunteer programs, um, a lot of upcoming events and future needs. So this will be a standing item on this committee. We'll keep bringing stuff forward as we um, get it. 
Um, speaking of, Kevin, Hector, and I are actually meeting with an instructor this Wednesday, and we're also planning out an event um, tomorrow. So there, we are working hard. If there's any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to go ahead and hold on one second, please. I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen, and then I'm going to hand it over to Kevin and Hector, and you guys can continue the discussion. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate all your work on this. Your, Thanks, Mike. Uh, your passion for recreation. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I just couldn't see you. I can only see my screen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's, Mike's going to be out there teaching these people. Later. Mike, just before you take off, I have a, kind of a, a question sure. for you. Just a, I guess we don't know a lot about the number of kids because they didn't answer, but it might be interesting to know in a survey. I wonder if the number of people leaving town for recreation tracks with the number of people who do inter-district transfers with their kids and then they just end up doing activities south of here um, and that information is in the economic development what's it called collaborative now i've, I've never been used to that yeah. but it's in the you know it's in the each of the city reports um you know Cloverdale has the highest per capita amount um of paying for private school out Side of yeah, so it's people inter district, -district oh. transfers and so it, which is going to public school as well as private school. So I'm just wondering if those numbers, um, you know, track and it might we just might want to have some more data around, you know, kids who are going to Cloverdale schools as opposed to maybe going to school outside and what their recreation choices end up being. So it's probably you know going to impact our our there's, numbers. There's probably a correlation. Yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah, I would assume so. And I mean, right now, a lot of what the, the classes that we're going to target at first are going to be based on the instructors that reached out to us so that we can actually, you know, offer those classes that people are willing to offer. And then when we start to um, have the ability and capacity to push for more instructors and more things, because I, I mean, like one of our goals with recreation is to focus on everybody, not to, not to silo one group. So we want to make sure we have youth classes senior yeah. classes, adult classes. But right now, I think we're kind of, we're going to be stuck with what we can get right now. <laughs> um, yeah. but I agree. I think that, I, I, like I said in the beginning, I, I was a little disappointed by, based on the marketing that we did on it, the, we just didn't get a lot of participation, um, particularly from the youth. And I reached out to the school district twice and a couple of teachers directly, and we just, we just got a handful of responses. So it's hard to see exactly what the kids are interested in. I mean, it's easy to yeah. garner it from experience and just from, you know, their parents. But. I have to ask the school district to do it, to just say, or, you know, partner directly with them, say, we're going to do this together, and that, that might be the only way you're going to get high participation. Yeah, yeah, the next school, so, I mean, yeah. the school board meeting. The schools do provide yeah. recreation opportunities for the kids. Yeah. So I'd say, but what we're not assuming, we're not seeing is how do we partner effectively with them to, right. you know, to bridge the gap. And, to, and as a, from my perspective, I mean, it's already happening. It's just, I mean, the kids, Right after school, they go to the city park and play basketball and all that afternoon. Right. They go play soccer, they play baseball, they go. So it's already happened. We just need, we need it on paper. There's already have all these programs are there. Right. Right. No, but I think it's a great, a great start. And we just need to, you know, make sure that I mean, we're starting small and without zero funding pretty much. So. Yeah. Um, but these, but your sample size, I mean, when you look at it, though, as a percentage of the population, it's actually statistically yeah, significant. Right. You're right on. I mean, I know 300 always seems weird. Yeah. And it's, um, but I was glad to also see that it was super old people. Where, where is it, where is, what page was the age breakdown again? What page is that? Right. That, that actually was a pretty good um, representation of people who weren't super old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's, 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 it's a surprise. I was like, geez, how much pent up demand is there for yoga? I'm like, wow. But I mean, yeah. um, you know, because yeah. instead of being at the turkey trot, I was doing, I was in my yoga class, we would yeah. watch them um, run by on Thanksgiving morning. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I kept saving my knees. Thank you very much. But um, I think that that's, that was very telling yeah. that that was so high um, okay. because the yoga studio on First Street closed um, yeah. because of COVID. And I know that my fellow yogis there's demand down, for it. There's demand for it. Yeah. So um yeah. yeah. And one of the conversations we've had as well is because there are a lot of people just utilizing our park, um, yeah. having classes in it without going through the city or going through insurance and getting the right, right. kind of way of doing it. So we do want to kind of rein that in a little bit, but a, a big factor um, as far as 
recreation's real growth will be kind of determined on the scout hut as we know that there'll be a lot of programming ability once that um, building is available to us. Uh, right now, it'll be a lot more partnerships and instructors that are willing to work in our parks or areas that we find that are suitable for their activity that they're proposing. But once we have the scout hut, I think that'll tremendously um, really facilitate that. Yeah. So. One is, another thing that we might be, Kevin and I talked about it in the past, there is there's some local coaches, mm -hmm. coaches that are local that are willing to donate their time just to get it going. Yeah. Maybe offer a couple classes of, you know, t-ball or, or soccer, or basketball, just to get us going and then after that, you know, until we find another instructor. So, yeah. yeah. And I know um, I, I spoke with a, a few of the Chargers coaches, which is the local football um, group for the under high school age students, um, student athletes in there. Uh, they'd really like to see a flag football league. A lot of the others, the other, their competition basically does that. Um, in all of, the, all of the other counties that they compete in. Um, they're not allowed to practice. They only are allowed to do it so often. So then they have a different venue, basically a different league that they attend, which is flag football. And it's across the nation is a big one too. So that's another instructor group that we're looking at. Um, you know, and girls' flag football is becoming really big. Girls' flag is really popular. hundred percent. My son went to, uh, Lord Hector went to flag football at the junior college. So it was three hundred dollars, so pretty expensive. And then right after that, he you know jumped to the real football here, but it really helped him out a lot as far as. Just you know, I got a couple of little girls on my list who were like, I wouldn't want to play against them; they'd be hardcore. Yeah, you know, I got a couple <laughs> little girls; they'd be fantastic, and there's, it's like exactly what they wanted to be doing. There's a few girls there on the, on the football oh, team. Yeah. Actually, football. Team. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't play. Yeah, but, um, play but no, football. black football amongst you know amongst high school girls is becoming popular yeah. nationwide. So it'd be great to be able to. Jump on that. Great, great job, Mike. Yeah. This is really some good yeah. data. So yeah, definitely a team effort. Yeah, we'll keep you posted on uh, the progress with our different classes and different things that are going on. But it is slow and steady because it, you know, we don't, uh, not having a dedicated recreation person, Hector, Kevin, and I are definitely putting in as much effort as we can when we can. But we're hoping that it'll get off the ground in the next few months to have a few more classes online, get our recreation software really getting pushed out and having some more events. So we're meeting tomorrow and we'll be able to give you more information at the next subcommittee. You'll uh, see a lot more problems. Or she might just bring in. This is fantastic. Great news. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for that, for the update. And we'll move on to item 10. Art okay. Um, I thought what I did was I went back and listened to our last meeting. I, I think I encapsulated what the comments were, um, differentiating between public and private spaces. Um, I think we can set up a, a, a open gov portal so that we clearly delineated uh, the process where someone can apply. Um, and we can put all the parameters within that application process. It's, we've already got the thing set up, so that should be uh, pretty easy. I know it's not as cool as Eureka's, and I went back and looked at that, and I. I tried to incorporate what I could. Um, I know they have more staff. I'm not using that as an excuse, but um, they have an economic development staff. They've got two gals that <laughs> that basically do this. Yeah. <laughs> so this uh, a very different situation. <laughs> this could change and evolve. I mean, one of the things I was thinking about was in the open gov portal. I'm sure, I don't know what the answer to this is, but we always charge a fee. But I don't know that we would want to do that. So. If we end up bringing this to council, I'll have some of the remaining questions. And one of the things in here too is, is city council approval mm -hmm. of the murals and art. And I know you weren't really interested in that. I just so I mean we can amend it if you want. Um I'm not, I'm concerned about the practical uh, yeah. implementation of this. So I mean, yeah, so the, the I'm glad it's still a draft. I I'm, I'm glad I I know you I know you worked on it and you have much bigger um things that you're currently occupied with however i was one of my observations is that i still feel like I, I i'm glad that it's been a long it's been several weeks since we really talked about it or any you because i kind of got to review it with with um with fresh eyes and i'm just reading it and i'm just like this still does not make sense to me <laughs> i'm sorry to be so i'm sorry to be so harsh but it really is not clearly delineating between 
here's the city's program. Here are the city owned utility boxes. Here are the city owned, you know, potential murals. And this is the process for it. If you are looking at doing this on a private, you know, on some, another a piece of property that is privately owned, this is what the process is going to be. And I just feel like we just really need to, it's just too muddled. If I were reading this for the first time, if I were, you know, you're a property owner who's been approached with, hey, you know, you've got a great uh, building site that's kind of getting tagged and, you know, we're interested, my, my, my group's interested in doing a mural, would you consider it? And if I then pulled this down and read it, I would be like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. So just reading it with, with fresh eyes, that was <laughs> my response. So I think we kind of need to go back to really delineating these are this is these are the city owned properties and this is what the process would be and then a private owner who would have a contract and this is where you can pull information from the eureka package is that the city the city of eureka doesn't get involved with the the process when the property owner is contracting with a muralist or an artist they just don't get involved except for the um the kind of common sense um, rules around signage and decency, you know, that's the you know, and so then there's just language in the, their general plan and their ordinance language about what's acceptable um, as far as like, you know, images or things um, that are viewable by the public. So I, I, so if I were a property owner and I owned a building, I would be like, I don't even understand what, because it skips around too much between the city owned properties which, you know, murals and utility boxes, and then privately owned and accessible mural sites and privately owned util utility boxes. Um, they clearly, you still have to go through a, you know, a, a signage approval, um, if I'd say on a on private property, which in my mind, it should be ministerial because I think that it, it, what difference is it between a sign and a, and a mirror? If you, if you have clear, if you have clear guidelines, um, it should be ministerial. But I also think that, you know, it, it would, it's appropriate for, we're talking about um, a city program, city utilities, city of building with a mural on it. The council wants to review it because it's a public art program and if they want to reject it and not have, um, um, an appeals process. I think that that's that's a choice. It's that that's fine. But to say that there's no appeals process for on a, my private on my building, I think a property owner would take issue with that because there's always an appeals process that either back to the planning commission or the city council when you're talking about you know um, a building issue. So I think that we're we're, we're being kind of to, uh, I mean, it's to, like, to, to, to we're, we already have a process that will that we can apply that will work. Why are we being so precious about it? Um, yeah, well, <laughs> well, you know what's going to really kick it off to is that mural that's coming up right now. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people in town are like that thing's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. you I've heard, I mean? heard yeah. some people were describing how awesome it was, and I will not say it. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. but, but I mean, it's every day it's looking better, and you can see how clean and how vibrant it is over there. You know what I mean? So, and uh, that's and, and, and because it was intended to be a pilot project, and I think right. that it's really showing its value. Right. But it, it, just a thought, because um, I, I think what, what Kevin's trying to do is create a program that addresses what, what can be a lot of different elements, and that, and that mm -hmm. depending on how you're thinking about it, it's like, well, this could be confusing. and. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like about Eureka's example is they created the box art program. It's very specific to the utility boxes. Right. And, and, and to me, it's kind of maybe that would be a way to break this up into a little more bite-sized segments as to have you know, the, uti again. the utility box part of it as, as one. And, and that way where that's where uh, the city has uh, the authority to Give the approval. Um, well, that might be closer to Windsor because in Eureka, the in Eureka and Santa Cruz, the the property owner who owns the utility box has the contract with the artist, and there is a 
uh, there are city guidelines as to what's appropriate right. and what isn't, just like there are for you know everything else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I guess I was thinking but of it's, uh, it's, public, yeah. public like city. Right, yeah. but that's and I think that that's where and I think that's where we need to um, and we, we need to, that that's potentially confusing because we have four city-owned utility boxes that the city would want to award to an artist to do, and our relationship would be with that artist. And then we also have public buildings like the side of City Hall and other you know, right. sites in the park, which are getting tagged all the time. So why would you put right. a mural up? Because murals <laughs> or studies, or, yeah, or, yeah. or under crossings, because yeah. murals are shown to people don't tag them. They, they and actually, um, it, 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 there, there's extensive information on this at this point. So I think that that's why I just like, if I were property owner and I were trying to bring this out, it's just it's just too muddled because we still we go back and forth between talking about the city owned properties and private properties, and it's confusing. Yeah. I, I kind of, because in the other side of it was in using this mural as an example, and then even the chambers is because it, because it is private property. It, it falls under kind of zoning. Right. And and so those were really treated as uh, zoning issues. Because you know, when when you could say, well, it's art, in some cases you could say it's a sign. It's kind right. of an interpretation. Uh, or you, know, you can make sign an art or art a sign. Um, All uh, signs should be art. <laughs> <I'm like laughs> and, 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 and those examples, at least on private property, just like other private property Proposals with the planning commission. Yeah, and and I I kind of thought that well that that lends itself to consistency and from the perspective of there is a review board. We don't have an arts commission. Right. That's you what know, is that we already kind of have the mechanisms in place to manage this. So I feel like we're just reinventing the wheel, well, making it more. One of the problems with the way we handled this one, but it's zoning, but it's not a it's not a good fit. There's no. There's nothing in zoning that says it shouldn't have advertising. It should. Yeah. It doesn't have the criteria that we have here. So we were just kind of like, take a look at it. I mean, I I would be a little uncomfortable just having something that big as ministerial. I yeah. I mean, I would rather have more people look at it. This is just my personal opinion. Um, we'll have a, we'll have maybe a perspective on yeah. art or somebody, and signage. And somebody besides me. <laughs> 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 that is appealable, you know, in that case, it, I mean, maybe one aspect would be to within zoning is put, create uh, in the, in the land use section where you, you have additional requirements. Mm -hmm. If you're proposing public art murals, Here's the criteria. Right. And, and I think that the appealable part is important because what if there were, you know, one of the letters that somebody took issue with the content of like, like, oh, that's not appropriate or that's, yeah. Then the artist can can hear that feedback and just make a change to it. So I think that that appeals process is is important. Um, just give, give the artist some feedback. Do you think... Or that looks too much like Healdsburg, or whatever people are concerned. You know, whatever people are concerned about, it's like, oh, that doesn't represent Cloverdale to me. Yeah. What about you? You want the, um, the council to review the ones that go on the utility boxes that we own. I think that that's a little excessive, but that's my that's my opinion. Because um, we've reached out to the other utilities, we haven't really been able to get much more. Let's so do, just paint, I guess. Let's just worry want. about. I think that like, like, and we have a city program for city property, and then there is a process. For private property and there's the process and the contract the whole idea the reason it, it came out of the economic development board at or the economic development um department in eureka is they really see it as a an economic development issue as well as dealing with you know just persistent graffiti and all kinds of issues and then, then it gave um when you have a private property owner who has a contract with the artist who does the work and then is gets a small gets a stipend to maintain it over five years or whatever the period of the contract is it gets it's a way for local business to support local artists who by the way are also businesses no i, I get it i just i mean that under that scenario that would so that would that could have been just done without anybody looking at it at all I mean, is that? Well, no. I think it would. I think it would have come to. I think it would have come to the desk, and if there were concerns, then it would have gone to a planning commission. I, that's what the planning commission is there for. 
Yeah, I mean, I, that's one of the remaining things in here. It says the city council will approve these. I mean, they approve state planning commission. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah I, there, there got, there's got to be a, there's just got to be a common sense um, template to apply to this somehow. Is that if it is in, you know, a, a open space, if it's over, if it's over a certain size, then it would, you know, it would, it would kick to the planning commission. But if it's a small, discreet, you know, um, mural. Than um, it could be minister. I, I, I'm just. I, yeah, I'm, I not, I'm not saying that I support either one of those. I'm just saying there's got to be a common sense, reasonable solution so that you don't. Yeah. I mean, maybe they. <laughs> maybe they apply through the portal. Mm -hmm. Then we look at it. Yeah. And we make a determination. But we'd have to put something in here. I would imagine some sort of criteria that's this size or something that. Yeah. I again. I just throw. I I feel like. Uh, Proving it ministerial, you know, for generosity. Yeah, that's what you to say. It was your fault that that, you know. Yeah. Well, and I think that, you know, the, when I, 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 and probably what you're probably concerned is probably the first um, iteration of the Starbucks logo is a really good example. That is not, that has been modified. <laughs> it, used to be a bear, it used to be a bear breasted. Uh, mermaid. Yeah. It is now not a very. She, right. she got a bikini <laughs> top. You know. So I, I think that that's what you're talking about, and I completely understand that. What about a if we're small with a subcommittee approved? Yeah. Send it to plan, planning and sustainability. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, are there any red flags that have come up? Yeah. And people, and then members of the public can come and say, you know, that's offensive, or I'm concerned about whatever, and they can say it. But then. I, mean, I think the criteria is good. It's you know there can't be any advertising. They have to have it within a year. That's weather exactly. proof, right? All of that. So then I would just have to think about the application process, which mm -hmm. I put in here using the city portal. Uh, and then it would just maybe there'd be another line that says. So that would based be for the city utility boxes, right? It would be no advertising. Well, I think for for all of them. Okay, so if Mike and Denaire had a utility box and they wanted to put a pepperoni pizza. Would that be considered advertising? Well, see, I don't know. I I, <laughs> I do know our well, program in your game. Yeah, that's uh, why I, I, I struggle with that exact question. Well, and that's why I brought yeah. up sorry, that's why I brought up several times when we've been discussing this is that the art store in Santa Cruz, their utility box is a Crayola box. Which is totally cool and fine. Isn't that cool? Don't and fine. But they watch it advertising one of their products. So I mean, so I, I I'm 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 putting you on the hot seat. So yeah, I don't talk you about it. I really don't. Yeah. I, it's I you know but that's the thing is I don't know. Well, that's a, that's a, I, think that's a common, I think that's a common sense question. Is that that's and that's the problem is if, and that's the problem with conflating the city program with a private program. You may kind of made my point for me is that city program shouldn't have anybody's advertising on it. But if a public or if a, a private landowner wants to paint their utility box and have it be in the shape of a submarine sandwich, like out front of Eagle's Nest, then she should be free to do that because that's fun, it's whimsical, and it has it's related okay, to her business. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I'm just saying. I mean, I probably shouldn't say Moe's Eagle's Nest. She, that, that's, right. that's what we're trying to get away from. Do we but, want any oversight? You know, um, that's my question. I, I think that just the regular, and that's to the point of the regular signage regulations. Or, or the basis of it is already in there. It's in the zoning. In the zoning. It's yeah. decency and you know, yada, yada. If you want to say that, that the company can't put their company logo on their business name, but they can put things that are related to their business, then what's wrong with that? Because we were- Dance studio wants to put little dancers. Well, well I you know, told you great ideas. I just yeah. want to know if you guys want to take a look at it before and they do it. I mean, that's kind I, of it. I think that you guys do that all the time. And if there's a question, why don't you kick it to the subcommittee? One of one of the uh, Madam Chair, one of the examples that I I thought about in the framework of this program was the trading post because mm -hmm. yes. they had the wall sign, which they did not get permission. They did not get permission, and, and 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 it was it was partly artistic. Yeah. It was partly it was also Western, but then it had trading posts. You know, it was an advertisement. So that's what we were, and at, at that time we said it required a sign permit. Sure. sure. And, sure. and so that's why I, I was kind of thinking with murals, you know, it's like businesses, rightfully so, are always thinking of creative ways to uh, market, promote their business. Yeah. And, 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 you know, one thing is just pure art, it, but 
where do you draw the, the line? I say, well, that's well, advertising and art. So it's kind of like if it's on private property, go to planning commission. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty simple process. It's a sign is it's a it, sign question. It's a, a, a kind of a sign slash art permit. And if it's on a public utility, then it's really we can create this these guidelines that say, hey, if you do these things, it's a real simple yeah. uh online. That's what I'm, that, that's what I'm interested in seeing is something that is just completely separate. And then when businesses want to contract with an artist to to paint their utility box or to do a mural, you know, and I think sadly too, you see examples of really beautiful old signs that Cloverdale actually has lost. If you go to Petaluma or you know, know. Uh, but you go, you know, some of the old like the Levi, yeah. Levi's totally. jeans signs that used mm -hmm. to be on the sides of buildings, the you know shade cream uh, mm -hmm. advertising. Those are they're now appreciated as really being art, mm -hmm. and they are being preserved. But if you were a business now. There isn't a city that would allow you to put a uh, advertising like that. Right. So I think that that's kind of what we want to balance here. Is just like let's just use some common sense. No, I'm not, I'm, totally, I'm not trying to complicate this thing. Honestly, I just want to get get it to where you're you know satisfied with it, and we can get this thing up and running. I mean, one of the things about and I'm not trying to go around, but I get a, a, a sign permit is generally on um, the property of the so it would be you know I don't know the off site sign. So if it's just using processing it as a sign permit if it's not on the building of the business. It's an off site well, it sign. It could be, but, but it could be the property. It, it, it may not have anything to do with the business that's occupying it. It could be the, the yeah. property owner saying, I'm sick of that big old wall being tagged. I want to create, I want to put a mural out there. Um, why should we so Why should we make it so complex? We, we, could, if we agree on this and get this adopted. Yeah. We could say, okay, there's these four utility boxes in town mm -hmm. and then open it up with some kind of yeah i think that's publicity. Really, yeah do an art do do a do an rfp and david can approve all. yeah there you <laughs> go. <laughs> i think it's a key development director what we said that we said okay we got these four boxes to make your thing, here's the criteria. And that's can we bring our, them here? And that's our program. Yeah, that's our program. Bring it to the subcommittee. Bring yeah. it to the subcommittee. Because it's our program. It's our program. It needs, it needs, it needs murals and parks on buildings. Those, those are our programs. We yeah. have control over it. Yeah. But we also need to facilitate and make it easier yeah. for private. Right? Because this is this is not going away. There's more and more public art. Eureka yeah. is going gangbusters. Yeah. Middletown is now going to be painting their water towers, and they're they look amazing. So I mean, this is something that that the this was this was not something that's. I mean, I brought this years ago yeah. to the council. I've been trying to get this done years ago. Meanwhile, that mural is happening in spite of us, not because of us. Yeah. That beautiful addition to the city, that was the, that's an upswell from the community. There's tremendous support for it. There's a thirst for it. So let's get our act together and make it, make it happen. Make it happen. Yeah. And make it as I'm easy not, as we, possible. I am not trying to make this complicated. So I realize. I know. I just it's want just to do it. Okay. Yeah. You're in the middle I'm of the I'm going to say the utility boxes are going to be approved by the plan. That's our house. utility boxes. Yeah. Our utility boxes and our murals are handled by the city. Yes. Yes. The subcommittee. Yes. By the end of plan. Yeah. You guys. Subcommittee. And then the there will be a process for the applicant for the approval. And let's let's just do them the courtesy of including those free contract templates that the property owner and between the property owner and artist can get the heck out of the middle. Get out of the way. Again, I'm not gonna get... Make well, like we... Lenderon staff, put yeah. the eagles together and step yeah. out of the way. Okay. <laughs> I might be calling you. I'm gonna start. Okay, okay. okay. So so I'm I'm gonna go. Go. I, yeah, I have All a right. caller ID and I know not to answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or anything else on, but but I mean, but this is a labor of love, and I appreciate all the time you're putting, and also helping them kind of create the airplane as they're trying to fly it. So you did spend that uh, responsive. Well, I think so. We're gonna we're gonna assist with the uh, plant installation and the mulch installation. Oh, wonderful! So that yeah, that's that's, they they reached out to us to donate some mulch. So so, so we got. Um, you know, guy, you know, guy, trucking up. <laughs> 
on a mulch. Uh, like, oh, yeah, I got a truck yes, and a truck. That's right. You got a truck and a truck. That's all you need. We eat chips. Yeah. We eat some chips and those. We got us some chips. There we go. So that's the art program. I don't have anything new on Great Boga Trail. No. As you guys do, we're not. We're just we're just chugging right along. Actually, there's a new board member, Deborah Garns from Rio Dell, joined us. So that'll be. Um, she'll be a wonderful addition. Um, I have, you know, um, and then item 12, regulation size pool. Just for the record, this is where I, this is one of the things I leave Cloverdale for. I go to take the Hillsburg pool and do my last one. So um, it would be great if we could, at, at some point, partner with the school district so that we actually had a regulation size pool. And, and that, and that uh, this item is on the Joint City School Subcommittee agenda. Great. So I don't know if you want to leave it here. Or I'm going to, let's, let's leave it on both. Okay. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get somewhere on that someday. Uh, that's how that's how projects happen, right, David? Someday. Oh, wow. <laughs> One year. <laughs> Twenty years later. So yeah. years <laughs> okay, and then um, oh, oh, kids' birthday. We have an update. Kids' birthday. Yeah, so we had so we you know we had that uh, we had a very successful uh, kids' to parks day on May 18th. It was very successful with the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, we got a lot of positive feedback from the community, and we're hoping to keep the same project that was next year. And what I was planning on doing, do it every year. I was planning to do it is um, I want to work with the uh, Lee Land, the, the sheep raiser, to see if we can have the sheep for that day oh. for May 18th, which that'll be. Yeah, we'll have them there by then. Yeah, yeah. 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 So be yeah, about the, the, the right time when the grass starts kind of drying out yeah. and be a good time to get those. Get them in there. So, so that's the plan. We just have a neighbor day with him. We could just have a lockbox and a neighbor day. Yeah, we got a couple. He's the basket. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So he's uh, so that's the plan for that. I'm thinking, you know, maybe this year was very successful. It was, once we made it to the top, uh, <laughs> we had some, we had some watermelon and some, some lemonade and some refreshments. Yeah. And it was just some great pictures. Yeah, some hardcore hiking kids that went all right. Far. So, kids are like four years old. They're like, I want to go to that trail. Like, how old are you? Yeah. So. Go south. I got my sunglasses. Go ahead. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad. No. Congratulations on implementing that. That as it's nationwide event. That's right. why we have to do it every single year to make sure yep. kids know about that work. That's so this year we're going to add the, the uh, grace, uh, all the sheep grace zoo components to it. Do you think that by next May we might have the scout hut? Well, there is a little bit to report on that. Um, and we're uh, entering into a small contract with an architect who's going to do some preliminary stuff. I think he's only like 10, 10 hours. Uh, so yeah. He's going to interview us on the programming needs a bit, assess the electric. We need a couple other things. Yeah, he's going to assess the electricity. He's going to, he's going to assess, uh, he's going to pretty much do a whole entire inspection of the building to see what, what condition it is now. Yeah. Um, you so need to get the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So still have those sterling fuses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For real. oh, my God. So we're going to, so we're going to have some of those. <laughs> yeah, so we got a, a schedule meeting coming. I'm gonna provide with some ladders and we really got some the electrical. Um, then we've already had two or three needs that we're hoping to take this project. Yeah. I mean, so we've got uses for that, so oh, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. The parks office is gonna be the first thing we're gonna build. Hey, um, uh, Hector, hmm? are you able to touch on, um, just because it was a future agenda item last time, was the adults to parks day? Um, it's a, I know we're mostly talking about kids' parks day here, but we wanted to, uh, do you have any update on a potential adult to park day? Well, we talked about it. We, thanks, Mike. Uh, so we talked about it before the May 18th event to do a combination of, of uh, an adults to park day and then a kids to park day on the same day. We we're hoping to do a, a, the first hike at 10 o'clock, if I remember right, and then the second hike at about 11, 1130. But once we got there, we figured that we determined that most of the kids were with their parents and there was, you know, and their grandparents. And so we, uh, but I think it's a great idea. We ended up just doing just that one hike, but uh, I think it's great. I think it's a great idea to do that. I think we should, we should do it maybe on the same day. Like we had planned originally, it was your idea to have it early in the morning for the kids or, or vice versa and later on the evening. Depending on weather. Depending on the <laughs> That is actually really nice. It wasn't yeah. too hot. So, yeah. but no, I think it's a good thing. It's, Possibility, it's a good, it's a good thing, mm -hmm. and we can do it at the other park as well. Yeah, Portico Creek, it's colder. Yeah, there's just agenda. I just want to make sure you touched on it. Thank you. Thank you. Question. you know I have a question, I lost it, but I'll come back. Oh, um, and I'm sorry, I don't think we, we can find a way to make this work with the agenda. Do we do we have a kind of estimate on opening day for Soto Springs Ranch? 
Well, we uh, are we still working with the Open Space District on finalizing next May. <laughs> and I think the, um, the we, we need to get that finalized. Uh, one of the critical elements that we received in the, we, we got a response to our uh, request for funding and it, it did not include some critical elements uh, and that included doing the sequel work mm -hmm. that was <sighs> gonna, uh, that, you know, necessary yeah. just to, um, to run. To make sure that we uh, everything we do, you know, is consistent with CEQA. Uh, and that's usually kind of the first thing we do. We get that out of the way, so everything else we do when we apply for grants, we we check that box. Yeah. Um, and, and that way, if anybody raises any concerns about trail work, etc., we, we've got that addressed. Uh, but that was not funded. I, I pointed that out and uh, to the director, and she said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we, we 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 fund that." And I was like, "Okay." Uh, and and the uh, the other element that was pretty critical was uh, they, they pointed to the policy. They don't want to fund offsite improvements, and we kind of understood that going in with with a boulevard going north and. A uh, local resident was asking for you know kind of sidewalks going down the street, but we included in the budget the the, the specific the specific frontage improvements to the entrance. Yeah. Uh, the there's an existing drain pipe that needs to be replaced. It's called Hughes Culvert. It's deteriorated. And through that gate right there. Yeah, yeah right through the pole oh, yeah. gate. Yeah, and it's not gonna last. And sure. so. Uh, well, hey, we want to have an El Nino here, yeah. David, and they'll just blow that right out. <laughs> and basically, make the, 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 the entrance itself uh compliant with it with the accessibility requirements. Um, and I understand they don't want to, they don't want to fund off site, but there's some level of improvements just at least from the, the cross from the, the corner to there with crosswalk and truncated domes and entering to get people to the parking lot area. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's no different than what we did at Porterfield. We have ADA parking, mm -hmm. um, you know, the accessible path, just just the basic elements. Because I know that's used. Uh, it's used a lot, and not only not only for ADA, but, you know, uh, and all that was on our original additional uh, original annulment request, funding request, request for them, but they they, they wanted more details. More details. So, so and not only like for ADA, I mean, if once we open the park, there's going to be ADA vans. They're going to drive through that culvert. Yeah. Drive oh, yeah, through the park. Not, the park. Not, yeah. The um, existing infrastructure cannot support the entrance. Right. And if you think about it, it's really inside the park. It's not outside the park. It's inside the park property. That culvert. So. Yeah. And then uh, not just have our fire trucks. You know, yeah. with all the vegetation matching fire trucks. You know, with our wood chipper, our cell mm -hmm. trucks. So, um, since then. Uh, we met with Vanessa Apodaca out there uh, to get some additional information and to kind of fine tune our answer to them. We uh, I just checked with Vanessa before the meeting and she said she's going to get us the information. You know, in the next a more detailed days. engineering yeah. estimate. And then asked about that way to kind of fine tune it. Just yeah, we want to go back with the with. I mean, I think it was an oversight on their part to not include in their their funding approval the sequel piece because mm -hmm. hey. You know, said that that's a precursor to everything we do, uh, and uh, the the right. frontage improvements, which are so critical. Those two things. You maybe get Gore's office involved at this point and make sure that that happens. Yeah, we, we certainly can. Let's we, do that. We want to make sure it's we we have all the info it's ready to go, and then right. we'll, we'll certainly include his aid in that. Yeah, well, I of, think Chris Gray will be very um, effective yeah. at um, and be yeah, and just see it. Um, that we can't, be, you couldn't even have a fire truck make five trips over that culvert and have expected right. to to sustain that. So I think it's time to get the supervisor's office involved. Yeah, we were, uh, I immediately expressed disappointment. We were shocked. Yeah, we were all shocked. I mean, you didn't think the bucks going to I mean, it seems almost like we're going to be. That's the difference between you guys and me. You guys are like, oh, no. And then I'm like, call more. <laughs> right now. Yeah. That's always a fight. Another uh, another item that they completely left out was a vegetation management yeah. uh, funding that we requested. I mean, they, they didn't even touch on that. It was like zero. They said, you know, so it's like, a, you know, that's, uh, I, it makes me think that they didn't even read the application. I don't know. Did they, they, they forgot sequel. I mean, again, <laughs> again, yeah, just like, I think Paul. So, anyway, so, so Vanessa, uh, Vanessa, we met with Vanessa. Vanessa's going to send us a, uh, a more detailed kind of 
we're not including the eight, the uh, I guess the sidewalk that we were originally thinking of building to the city park over to it. Just have like minimum ADA requirement just to get that culvert replacement because those you know that I culvert also, replacement. I would, also, I would also call Chief Jenkins and say this is what you know these are some of the issues that were and it, it, it support from the fire district saying this is an essential part of our yeah, strategy. Yeah, how are we going to get in here? You, yeah, this is, yeah. I would get his input and um, the, with that and Gore's office and just saying these are absolutely essential um, that you fund these up front. Because again, the city of Florida is taking on a regional parks uh, level responsibility right. and this this is a multi-pronged issue. I mean, the, the other piece of it too, David, is that I mean, I know West Coast is always looking out for, you know, Funding for us, but there's probably some regional water, some water board funding for um, water quality, right. uh, and, and uh, that would be able to fund projects in in Soda Springs uh, because that's you know they've got they've got funding for that. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, great. Well, that's a that is a, a a very good update, and you guys are working really hard on that. Um, I think that's it. Man. Healthy community yeah. project. Yeah, no, no updates. Well, this is what we we're talking. We we're just yeah, covering. We kind of covered it. Covered this it, is right. all about building so, a <laughs> yes. selling in community. Um, because it, I, you, I call it the Scouts Cabin project. <laughs> <laughs> and then it ties up, chimes in with so many other things. Well, and the the other thing that's really frustrating about them not oh, wanting to yeah. to see improvements on first, not saying we're talking about outdoor improvements. We are not doing intensive. Um, improvements at the at Soda Springs because we already have the facilities at City Park and those two facilities really need to be seen as um, being tied together. Absolutely, it's supporting the less intensive um, development that they actually want to see in these open spaces. So they're actually they are um, working against their own stated goals. And so let maybe maybe uh, Grable can point that out to them. He's very good at that. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on um, future agenda items? Mm -hmm. no, um, if not, we will adjourn to our next meeting on October 15th. Thank you, yeah. everybody. Thank you, Mike. Yay, Mike. Yay, Mike. Mike. <laughs>